12 games into the season and we sit in fourth place. But as we found out last episode, we can beat the big teams like PSG and Lyon, but struggle against the smaller clubs. And that was proved again in a 2-2 draw with Nantes, who played 45 minutes with 10 men. So when our next match was against bottom of the table to lose, I thought we'd lose. Luckily for us, our players were on form as we won 3-0. We also gave Bastian his first full 90 minutes, and due to an injury to Tom Roth, young left-back Matteo perez Vinloff had his debut. We bought him in summer for £4 million from Bayern Munich, and he's been impressing in our second team in the fourth division and rapidly improving. He is still lacking a bit compared to Tom Roth, but looks more than capable of being a good backup and a future first choice next season. Then, despite missing a penalty, Dion Drenabelio scored his first goal in 10 games to help us beat Auxerre 4-2. That keeps us fourth in the table, but closes the gap to the top three as we approach the halfway mark of the season. Today, we have some tough games coming up against Monaco, Marseille and Lille. Now for this game, once again, Tom Roth is injured. It's his third small injury since joining the team, which is an awful Awful, but it's just a bit annoying. So Matteo Perez Vinloff is going to get a start today instead. Monaco is meant to be the easiest of the three games coming up today. They're ninth in the table as things stand, so not in great form, but given our history of not doing so well against teams mid-table and lower down and actually beating the teams higher up the table, as we go 1-0 down to Monaco, I think we could say the same is happening again. Still, with 80 more minutes to get ourselves back in the game and in front, so... I'm not too worried yet. The inconsistency does worry me a little bit though. I mean, that I think it's probably more to do with a flaw in our tactic where it just works well against the big clubs. And then for some reason, when clubs are parking the bus a little bit more, a bit more defensive against us, it just doesn't quite work so well. So maybe there's some tweaking we can do in that to try and help us. But at the same time, you know, we are still fourth in the table. We're only seven points off the top of the table as things stand right now. So it's not like it's dramatically affecting our season. We just have to roll with the punches. I think as we get better players as well through transfer windows, that is gonna help us as well uh, because they'll be more consistent and be able to win games on a more frequent basis right now. But Monaco go 2-0 up. I think we may even make some changes here at halftime because there's quite a few players not playing particularly well. Uh, I'm going to hand in my pockets. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. And then we're going to make some changes. Let's bring Dion Drenabelio on. Uh, Hollick at right back for Chase on a 6.3. And Nan's on a 6.3. So let's bring Cernia and actually Mitrovic as well for Bassi. They're on 6.3s. Get them off. Apparently, Mateo has picked up an injury, which isn't great. Uh, that is frustrating for him. He's not actually dropping in condition but he is hampered by it so maybe it makes sense to bring that club on as well five changes at half time unprecedented the annoying thing is monaco have had three shots we've had four shots that's really frustrating we just can't seem to do anything doyle's corner has been cleared uh, he then gets the ball back finds Cobra on the edge of the area who looks for Cerny who has only made substitute appearances for us so far this season and actually we promoted obviously Matteo uh, last time out or in between episodes I should say he's done pretty well he is also playing for the second team I've got him playing 90 minutes for the second team he's just training with the first team and we can use him when we want to I've also promoted Ayman Aki now he was meant to go out alone this season but no one really wanted him so he's played in the second team done well we've done the same thing promoted him he's not going to get quite as much game time because he probably is quite comfortably the third best right winger we've got however he does need some game time in the first team so he'll start to get that a little bit over the coming weeks as well but given Anan is so good, you know, he's our first choice. So he's the wonder kid. He's the guy with the potential. It makes sense to play him all the time. But when he doesn't play very well like this, it's nice to bring Cerny on the pitch. We need to go a bit more attacking, though. I'm going to shout demands more. There's not really a whole lot more I can do change-wise because we've made all our subs already. But actually, we have been better in this second half. We're seeing highlights in our favour as Pablo Martinez puts his shot just wide of the mark. Should have maybe tried to play a through ball to Bellio but he got greedy. Oh my word, Monaco have done nothing in the second half. They've still only had three shots, two on target, compared to our 12. This is not a game we should be losing, you know? And, and sometimes, 
I don't even know what we even blame it on. It's just football. It's just football, isn't it, I suppose, in some situations. And that's what we're seeing right now. It is frustrating as Koba can't quite win the ball. If we can get a consolation goal, that would be nice. So then push the pressure on uh, the visitors. But really, at the moment, they're doing a good job just passing it around, getting it forward. Fafana gives it to Belio, who can't quite win the ball properly. But we do win it with Mitrovic. He can now find the ball into Belio, who's in the area, maybe offside. He can't score anyway, so it doesn't even matter. I think in the grand scheme of things, it's just one of those games. We're just going to have to accept it. Even though we were better on the day. We didn't get the win. Monaco's game plan nullified is enough that we couldn't score a goal. And they might get a third now. They've had three shots on target. That's all they've had. I mean, if we get a consolation goal, great. Uh, <laughs> but of course we're not going to. 19 shots to four. They had three shots on target. That is an FMing. That really is the biggest FMing of all time. Thrash the arms, not happy. Anyway, we've got Marseille up next. They're first in the table, so that is a guaranteed win. Another youth intake preview, and another preview looks very, very good. We should get at least one good goalkeeper, at least one good fullback, and an attacking midfielder as well. Four and a half star youth intake predicted. That's what it's been every single season. Outside of those three positions, uh, no one else is going to be looking too good, apparently. But I'm waiting for the day when we just have a bad youth intake because it's got to happen at some point, but it just hasn't happened yet. Oh, Borussia Dortmund want me to be the manager. It would be lovely to link back up with Marsa and have Tom Roth next season when he goes back to Dortmund. But this is all about rebuilding St Etienne, so decline. So let's get uh, Tom Roth back in the team for this game. And actually, the team did play well last game, didn't they? They just... I don't know how we fell apart, but we did. I do want to start Dion back, though, ahead of Yakubu. Ultimately, I think he is now to lead us forward, so I think he's got to play. I just hope he's learned his lesson by sitting on the bench for a while. Maybe, actually, Busio deserves a start. He's not played for a little while. Pablo Martinez has. And Belic has been out of the team for a little while. Let's swap him with Doyle. So a few changes. So kickoff is upon us. Marseille away, they're top of the league. This is going to be really difficult. We've not had quite the same fast-paced start to the game that we had against PSG last time out when we won 3-1 in the end, but we scored a very early goal to give us the advantage. Marseille coming forward first, but a nice interception there. <laughs> then we lose the ball in the penalty area. Tez Magno, obviously they've signed him from uh, New York City FC. Very good wonder kid in the game and in real life as well. His shot over the bar, luckily for us. We looked pretty dominant in the game against PSG last episode. This time around, it's the opposite. It looks like uh, the better team right now is Marseille. But Busio has just scored a goal to justify his start. And against the run of play, we take the lead. And that takes us up to half time where we stay in front. If we just had won the games we were meant to win this season, we actually probably would be in that title fight and maybe even in first place. Like I say, I, I just don't think we're going to be there come the end of the season. But as it stands right now, halfway through the season, we are only four points off the top. So maybe we should actually say to ourselves, you know what? We said at the start of the season we weren't going to be in there. So we gave ourselves a bit of, you know, a bit of slack, really. Didn't really care too much about it. But now at halfway through the season, we are there and we're only four points off. Maybe we need to be... Okay, well, ignore everything I've just said because we're now we're going to drop a few points back, actually. But still, the point remains, we are still right up there. Highlight straight from kickoff. I was about to make a couple of changes, but maybe I won't yet. As Justin Che brings the ball down his near side, finds Anan, who then gives the ball to Renan Lodi. He goes back to the keeper, Pau Lopez, who sends it long down the middle of the pitch, headed by Buchmann up to halfway and over halfway by Busio, but second ball won by Renan Lodi, right down, to, uh, right down, to, yeah, right down, uh, I can't even talk, what am I trying to say? Right down to what? I've lost my train of thought, ignore whatever they just did. So maybe changes are needed. Bassi playing poorly, Mitrovic on Yukum, Belio playing poorly, Yakubu on Yukum. Belio started off the season amazingly and now he's just dropped off significantly. It's annoying. Fontana 6.4. We're going to bring Bastian on. And actually, Coburn not having a good game either. So let's bring Pablo Martinez on. Go a little bit more positive. Confirm the changes. Shout, encourage. 
just to see if we can pull something out of the bag at the end of this game. The match stats suggest that we should not get anything out of this game. The better team have been Marseille and we give the ball away to them. With 10 minutes to go, are they going to snatch a victory here from the jaws of defeat to start off with? Then they pulled one back, obviously. Che with a good challenge, though. Belic then gets the ball into Pablo. Four to Busio, and we've got players going quickly. It's a four-on-four -four situation here. Five with the advancing midfield here. Busio takes it on himself, though. A little bit selfish. Should have looked for better options, but to be fair... I must say the Marseille players did mark them very well at the back there. Nullified nullif 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 the attack very well. And as the clock ticks down, it's a 1-1 draw. And you know what? I'll accept that, especially away to the league leaders. So, okay, we're seven points behind Marseille, six points behind PSG. We're just in touching distance of that title fight. A good few games in the second half of the season, we could be right up there. But let's not get too excited. I don't think we're going to be in a big fight come the end of the season. Next up, we've got Lille. They've dropped down to 10th in the table, so they must be in a bit of poor form, actually. Wow, now Atletico Madrid want me to be their manager. It's not easy being this good at the game, you know. But again, we can't do it because we are going to be in charge of St Etienne, who are now about to play Lille. Right, let's give this one a go. I think they played really well last game, actually, all things considered. So I don't really feel a need to change anyone in the team however I might give Bastian another 90 minutes here uh, he needs some more game time and actually Fontan didn't play very well in the last game anyway we need to get back to winning ways especially at home It'd be great to actually win a game on an episode today you love to see it Dion Adrenabelio has got his first goal of the episode it's his second in like four games four or five games actually However, he had scored nothing in the previous 10 after that. So he's finally, hopefully, getting back to scoring ways. He's getting himself in those opportunities to put it in the back of the net. We know he can do it. He did it so well at the start of the season. We just need him to continue doing it. And hopefully we're going to win the ball right now and score a second goal inside of five minutes to take control of this game. But Lille are not having any of it. They're getting forward down the far side of the pitch. Cross comes in and it's bounces between our defenders, comes off the back of one of our defenders, and then falls to Giovanni Lo Celso, who scores. This was a bit like a pinball table. So Smell brings the ball forwards. He can get a low cross in. It bounces, I think, off the back of Che, hits the post, hits maybe Bastian or Buchmann. <laughs> Either way, it just bounces around, and we're unlucky to concede there. Lille free kick then, and they try to put a ball into his near side of the penalty area. It has been blocked, but only as far and cleared as far as the, the free kick take, but we do manage to block the cross. But once again, Smal is like a dog at our heels, just yapping and scratching away. But Belio can then win the ball back. Advance on the Lille goal is pushed out wide by two defenders, but holds on to the ball well. Finds a pass back to Roth, finds a ball back to Belio. He puts the ball in the middle, and Busio is there once again to get a goal. Oh, Gianluca, I love you. You are a wonderful man as Benjamin Rollheiser puts the ball into the middle for Lille. Corner has been cleared only as far as Umtiti. He lays off to Haraldson, who hits the crossbar. Very attacking game from both teams here. There's six shots apiece inside the first uh, 25 minutes. And most of them have been on target. And Busio finds the back of the net again. This is what we knew he could do. He just had to get himself going for half a season. But he's now finally getting the goals that we know he can get. Any of you who did watch that Venezia livestream series that I did a few years ago with Venezia, and we had Busio there, he was incredible. He came second in the Ballon d'Or one season. Like, that's how good he got to. And I'd love for him to... I don't think he's actually that good in a foot manager anymore. I think they may have reduced his potential ability just a little bit since then. And obviously, we got very lucky with the potential ability in that save and being so good and working our tactic. A lot of things fell into place. I think Bassi's goal there was offside. Uh, quite a long way offside, to be fair. It will come here as, yeah, disallowed. Yep, you can probably get a bus in between him and the last defender. So, at half-time, things are looking pretty good. May look to make a couple of changes early in the second half. In fact, I think I'll do it now, to be fair. Uh, Bassi is going to come off for Mitrovic. Apparently, Belich is injured. Uh, so, we'll get him off for Tommy Doyle. And I do want to bring on... Uh, Holic for Che, who's on a 6.5. Then when we get to about 60, 65 minutes, oh, good free kick there. We'll probably take Tom Roth off. 
to try and give our youngster a little bit more game time out there. And maybe in the second half of the season, we actually start to transition Roth away. Of course, he's not our player. He is on loan. Yes, he's good. And yes, actually, we do have an optional fee to buy him. It is like 18 million or something like that. And I don't think we'll do that when we have got such a good youngster behind him. Lille have just scored a goal. It's actually pretty decent, to be fair, which is rather frustrating for us as Rollheiser gets the ball back. It's put to the far post. And that man is a giant because he's bigger than all of our defenders there. So with 60 minutes to go, we are looking at a 3-2 scoreline. We are just ahead, but can we stay there? Let us, first and foremost, get Tom Roth off, bring Matteo Perez Vinoff on instead. Before that happens though, Holick finds Koba on the edge of the area. He finds Mitrovic, who fires just wide of the mark. And maybe what we should be doing at this stage is just dropping the tempo a little bit and, you know, trying to be more disciplined, time waste sometimes. Just look to hold on to possession a little bit more in the final 15 minutes of the game as we look to wind the clock down and pick up a very important three-point series. Perez Vinloff brings the ball forward, half Peruvian, half Swedish. I think he's started to play for the Swedish national team, or at least their youth teams, because I'm sure his nationality was Peruvian to start off with, and then it's now changed to Swedish as Belio gets a goal. Was it onside, though? That's the question. It was onside. You love to see it. We're not even going to see a replay, apparently, of how close it was. So I trust that he was way onside. A brace for Bellio today is really important. Plus, he got the assist. I think that's going to do his confidence the world of good. So he is going to be absolutely ecstatic to now have two, three, four weeks off for winter break, obviously. Poor timing for him to start getting back into form, but hopefully he can carry that through. So a little bit of everything today. A win, a draw, and a loss, which isn't too bad. Four points from nine actually sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? Oh my god, it, it might not be four points from nine, because Lille just pulled one back in the 90th minute. Can we please just hold on? Please just hold on. Do not concede right now. Thankfully, we haven't. So four points from nine. It's okay. Dion, fantastic work. You were superb in front of goal last time out. Keep it up. And so at the winter break, we are fourth in the table lens, by the way. Level on points with PSG was not expecting that. Not quite sure when we're going to come back uh, because it kind of depends on how busy January gets with cup games. But I do want to do a little bit of January shopping because well, we have 45 million to spend, although not a huge amount in the wage budget. Now, there are a few youngsters that I've scouted out that to me look pretty good. Now, a couple of them, uh, these two, we have no interest in joining us right now, so I don't think we'll pursue either of those two. But I really like the look of this guy, Federico Ardizone, which I think is how you don't say his name. But he is an 18-year-old winger with 16 crossing, 17 dribbling, 16 pace, 16 natural fitness is very good, 17 agility, like he looks amazing. The issue is we play with an inverted winger on that side and his right foot is only reasonable. Now it's not a deal breaker uh, if we go to inverted winger on support actually. It's not a deal breaker, but I'd like him to have a better right foot. So we could train it into him. However, likelihood is things could change a little bit so i'd rather focus on improving things like his mentals but value between half a million pounds and seven million pounds i think he would be a great player to bring in there's also this serbian striker uh, on loan from partisan belgrade to vafc in the league below us he looks pretty good to me we just need to improve that composure and concentration but he's not a priority because we do have some good youngsters in the youth team it just depends if we can get a good deal for him then there's this 19 year old defender from monaco who has the fundamentals to be very good. Could improve quite significantly, but again, could be as much as seven million pounds, which does seem a bit expensive for a 19 year old. And then actually we're not seeing many good young keepers coming through. This guy's got four and a half stars of potential, but I think we're in no rush to sign a young keeper. So we'll probably wait to our youth intake. Although saying that our under 19 squad right now doesn't actually have a goalkeeper in it. So that could be useful. Then just in general, you know, there are lots of players who got scouted out who are pretty good, but we have to pick out the right players. And right now, I don't feel a need to massively make changes to the team, but I am slightly concerned that next season we won't have £45 million to spend. So if we want to spend it, we've kind of got to do it now, especially because we've only got £30 million in the bank balance. So it's likely our budget next season will be at most 
almost £30 million. So maybe we look to bring in some French youngsters instead for the big money right now, like Fode Ciala, right? He is a ball-winning midfielder, and given we can't seem to get a good match rating out of Tommy Doyle or Belich, you could be pretty good but you're gonna cost 27 million pounds. But I mean, for the most part, he is better than Belic, so would be a good addition. Then of course, there's Krupi, who is a striker, 20 years old, at Lorient, although he would cost all of our budget, so maybe not him. But we also really like Matisse, because he is a fantastic, you're currently on loan in the second division. Why he's that, I do not know. But again, he would cost us about 25 million. Is predominantly an inside forward on the right-hand side, which of course is where Anand plays. However, we can just play him up front as an advanced forward because he can do that very nicely as well. And with eight goals in 15 appearances, obviously knows where the back of the net is. And actually is better than DeAndre Nabelio right now. So would be good up front. So maybe we just bite the bullet and spend all of our money on those two youngsters. Who knows what we're gonna do? Find out next time.